I hope you guys are hungry because we've got some Dollar Tree meals that you are going to be absolutely blown away by. I'm Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. So for our first Dollar Tree meal, we are going to start with breakfast. We're going to do some overnight oats, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can make these. The great thing about these is they are super, super easy, and you can get everything you need at Dollar Tree, including the mason jars. First, you're going to grab some milk and some overnight oats. You want to make sure that you're not using the quick oats. You just want regular oats. And again, I grabbed all these at Dollar Tree. Go ahead and add a half a cup of oats to each one of your mason jars and try not to, you know, spill it like I'm doing here. And then for your milk, you're also going to add a half a cup of milk to each one of your jars. Now, if you want to stir this, you certainly can. I actually do not stir mine because I kind of like the texture that this gives. Now, you could certainly adjust this if you like your oats to be a little less... Uh, soupy then add a little bit less milk etc etc go ahead and add some vanilla extract mine did come from dollar tree as well i'm using about a quarter of a teaspoon in each one of these and again remember you're not mixing you don't have to mix any of this this is total freehand and this is so so easy these by the way will keep in the refrigerator for up to five days so the first one we're going to do is some cherries and we're going to do this in three of them now i grabbed this cherry pie filling and you're going to do two tablespoons we're going to do this in three of these because i am going to be making some variety for you today and i'm going to show you different ways that you can kind of do these you can play around with all kinds of different toppings and these are super super delicious trust me on this one Go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of your cherry. Now we're gonna do a peanut butter jelly flavor. We're gonna add a couple teaspoons or tablespoons there of peanut butter. I've got the crunchy peanut butter here. This is totally up to you. And then I wanna add some raspberry preserves. I mistakenly added it into that cherry one, but that's okay. I'm gonna roll with it. Now we're gonna add some into the other one. We're also gonna do a pumpkin pie one. We're gonna do some pumpkin puree in here. And then we're going to take that um, oat granola bar. We're going to crumble that up and we're also going to use some raisins in this. This is going to be super, super yummy, especially with that hint of vanilla that's in there. This makes for such an easy, easy breakfast. So go ahead and add any kind of nuts. I've got a small package here of some almonds and some walnuts that I did grab at Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to top the rest of these with some honey roasted peanuts. Now those honey roasted peanuts we are going to use in a future recipe. So go ahead and reserve those. You can keep those out in the corn, out on the cabinet, on the cupboard. And of course, we've got to add our chocolate chips into this. I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple teaspoons of chocolate chips in each one of these. And then go ahead and seal these up. And these are done. You can leave these overnight. You can eat them cold right out of the refrigerator. I've already eaten one by the time this photo was taken. And you can also heat them up if you want to. Super, super yummy, super easy, and super delicious. Now for this next meal, we're going to grab a really easy lunch. We're going to grab some Rotel. I did pick that up at Dollar Tree. I've also got this cheese. Dollar Tree cheese can be kind of iffy sometimes. I'm going to give this one a try. And then this tomato soup. If you can find another brand that's not this Clark brand, I highly recommend it. This Clark brand, unfortunately, is not very tasty. Go ahead and to combine your tomato soup and the Rotel together. You're going to kind of make like a chunky tomato soup here. You're going to go ahead and just kind of stir everything together and make sure that that comes up to a very slow simmer. Um, go ahead and mix it up. And again, unfortunately, that Clark brand was not the best. It kind of tasted like straight ketchup. So if you can find another brand that's not that Clark brand, I highly, highly recommend it. Go ahead and preheat your oven. You're going to preheat the oven to 425 degrees, and that's going to be for your Texas toast. We're going to be making some cheese toast with this. Go ahead and take your Texas toast and put it out on a baking sheet. You probably don't need a baking sheet as big as this one here. My smaller one was actually in the dishwasher, so 
I'm going to just use the big one, and uh, we're going to make the best of it. For this Texas toast, I put it in for just a couple minutes until it started to get light brown. Then I'm going to take that cheese and kind of crumble it up on top of there, and uh, we are going to then put this back in the oven to finish off. Now, I will say this cheese is uh, decent. It's not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. It actually melted, so that's a huge plus. Go ahead and add some of your tomato soup into a bowl. We're going to get a couple big ladles full here. I have really big bowls, by the way, so don't, uh, don't think that they're abnormally small or abnormally large. Your Texas toast, you didn't, you see it kind of melted. It unfortunately didn't get real brown or crispy, but this toast is definitely crispy. Wait until I show you this other side of this. This turned out actually a lot better than I expected, but look how crispy that toast is. Go ahead and add it into your tomato soup, and you've got some really nice dippers to be able to eat your soup with. Just, again, make sure you don't use that Clark soup because it was kind of yucky. All right, so this next one is dinner time. Two packages of meatballs. You're gonna grab these egg noodles. I found these at Dollar Tree. Some Italian seasoning and also some cream of mushroom soup. The Clark's cream of mushroom soup was good. Go ahead and take your meatballs and put them in your pot. Whatever pot you're going to be making everything in. There's a reason why we're doing this. Go ahead and just get those meatballs to where they are just starting to brown and get a little crispy. And again, you're gonna do it all in one pot. Uh, put the meatballs aside and then add some water. That water is going to help kind of soak up those bits and things. Add your egg noodles, cook those, drain those, put some cream of mushroom soup into the pan. Again, this cream of mushroom soup by Clark's is actually really good. I do recommend this one. For the cream of mushroom, you're just going to go ahead and just kind of bring that up to a simmer. Get that stirred up really, really good. And as you're doing that, you're kind of scraping off those little bits from the meatballs and such. Go ahead and add the meatballs back in. Go ahead and stir those around. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this Italian seasoning. Again, this meal, everything did come from Dollar Tree. It looks like I added a, quite a bit of Italian seasoning in there, but it actually turned out perfect. So go ahead and be generous with that Italian seasoning because it's really going to flavor that cream of mushroom soup. After you've drained your noodles, go ahead and just dump them right inside the pot there. Stir everything up around and get it to where everything is just kind of heated up again. and. When this is done, you've got the best Dollar Tree beef stroganoff. I love this meal so, so much. It is so delicious. It is definitely one of my favorites, and I've got plenty for leftovers, which is even better. This next meal is going to be a delicious kind of an Asian pot sticker soup. You're going to take these chicken pot stickers from Dollar Tree, some chicken broth. I also have this peas and carrots mix that we're going to use about a quarter of it. And then I had some spinach left over in the freezer. I take fresh spinach and I put it in the freezer. I put it in the freezer as soon as I get it. And uh, I just kind of break it up like this, just kind of squeezing it. And what's really cool about this, especially if you're doing like soups or chilies or anything like that, it makes it really, really easy easy to just add a big handful into whatever you're cooking. Go ahead and take your chicken broth. You're going to put that in your pan. You're going to bring that up to a boil because then you're going to add your pot stickers. I did two bags of the pot stickers and you're going to go ahead and let those kind of reheat. I don't know about you guys. I love soup. I eat soup all year round. My grandma ate soup all year round and I think I definitely get that from her. So after this comes up to a boil, you're going to go ahead and stir that just a little bit so your pot stickers don't stick. And then you're going to add a handful of spinach in here. I went ahead and added a couple handfuls and then this peas and carrots mix. It was honestly more carrots than peas, but go ahead and add that into your soup as well. And then you're just going to kind of stir everything up. You're going to bring it up back to a simmer. And when this is all done, you've got a delicious, very, very yummy kind of an Asian chicken pot sticker soup. And this is so, so good. Add a little bit of soy sauce if you want to. Add a little bit of red pepper flake. This is delicious and it makes such a great hearty meal.
All right, it is pizza night at Dollar Tree. We are going to grab this package of pepperoni. I picked this up in the regular kind of pantry section. Some tomato sauce and this pizza crust. This is a thin pizza crust. The directions on the back are really, really easy. It's 425 degrees and it actually goes directly onto the rack. We're gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 425 and get that ready. Then for our pizza, I'm also going to add some real mozzarella cheese because we know that Dollar Tree cheese is not the greatest go ahead and spoon on some of your tomato sauce you could use pizza sauce if you want i kind of feel like it's the same thing you're going to go ahead and add as much sauce as you want i'm kind of like somewhere in between i don't like a lot of sauce but i don't like a little bit of sauce so sauce to your content whichever you feel is the best for your pizza and for your family so go ahead and spread this out i did work at pizza hut by the way i never um stayed there long but I, I did work there um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my mozzarella cheese and again you're gonna add to whatever your heart's content because this is going to be a very very delicious and yummy pizza now you could use the Dollar Tree cheese if you want I have found that the kind of packages the larger packages of the cheese are um, not real cheese so they don't melt really good so now we're going to add our pepperoni this pepperoni again you can find this kind of in the section where like the tuna fish and the packaged goods and like the rice mixes and things like that are um they were on a top shelf that's actually where i found the pizza crust as well and i've used these pizza crusts several times i really like these a lot this is probably one of my favorite kind of diy pizzas and again you can add whatever you want to this you could do pepper toppings you can find those pepper and onion mixes in the freezer section at dollar tree go crazy with it now this is what it looks like when it's all done this crunch when i am cutting through this is crazy it is so, so good, and I was able to split this up into a bunch of little pieces just because I'm trying to be a little dainty when I'm doing this for you guys. But look how yummy and delicious this pizza is. Delish. Now, this next meal is another Asian-inspired meal. You're going to take this Thai chili sauce. You can find at Dollar Tree. Some thin spaghetti. You're going to grab some chives. And then you're also going to grab some soy sauce. Now, the one thing I will say with this one, I've experimented a little bit. Definitely add some rice wine vinegar. I found this at Dollar Tree one time. It's not a common item by any means. So you may have to go to the grocery store or if you have some rice wine vinegar in your cabinet, that's going to be a huge plus. Go ahead and add your spaghetti into your pot i have a smaller pot here so i'm just going to go ahead and break up my spaghetti remember i'm cooking for one with these recipes so go ahead and also add in your chili spice your sauce you're going to add in some soy sauce i had some in the refrigerator that i'm going to use instead of opening the new one from dollar tree i'll put the new one back in my pantry now this is just kind of eyeballing i think i used about three quarters of the thai chili spice the sauce there I added maybe one or two teaspoons of my soy sauce and then a couple teaspoons of my rice wine vinegar. Go ahead and stir that up. And then this is literally just to kind of whatever your taste is. I did add a little bit more of that Thai chili sauce into there. And um, the Thai chili sauce is a little spicy. So if you're sensitive with spicy, just kind of keep that in mind with this particular recipe. We're gonna go ahead and add in some of our chives. And then I added in a little bit of garlic salt and I also added in some dried basil. So I just kind of kept tasting it and just kind of making sure it was kind of something that, uh, you know, wasn't too bitter, wasn't too sweet. And I just totally experimented. Go ahead and add your spaghetti noodles into there. I did drain these, but I did not rinse them because I wanted that starch in those noodles to really help soak up some of this sauce. The great thing about this is that you can put this in the refrigerator. This is an amazing cold noodle salad. You could add chicken to this. You could add broccoli to this. You could do peas and carrots to this. You can do a lot of different variations to this. This is absolutely delicious. I love this and I ate this for lunch and for dinner that same night. It was so, so good. I also topped it with some of those honey roasted peanuts. Now this next Dollar Tree meal is absolutely amazing. You're gonna add some potato and yolky. You're gonna grab a package of sausage. You're gonna also grab some cream and mushroom soup. Now this sausage, I did find at Dollar Tree. It was in the freezer section. You're gonna go ahead and just kind of 
plop that log in the pan there. And uh, as it starts to brown up, then you're going to go ahead and break it up. For the gnocchi, you're going to just boil some water off to the side and then go ahead and add the full package of the potato gnocchi into your pan. This was a half of one that was in the freezer from my previous recipes. And then I added half of a new package. So you've got a full package there and then for the spinach i just added two handfuls remember this is a great way to keep fresh spinach on hand even though it's frozen it actually tastes really really good i like this so much better than buying like the packaged spinach i don't know what it does but there's just a freshness about this that i really really like so after you've kind of let that kind of just kind of hang out in the pan a little bit. Go ahead and take your little tool here. I got this from Dollar Tree. And we're just going to kind of chop up as much of that spinach and those that sausage as you can. Kind of get it into smaller crumbles. And you're going to add your cream of mushroom soup. For the cream of mushroom soup, go ahead and just kind of glob that on the top. And then you're going to start to stir this around a little bit. You can add a little bit of water. I ended up adding about a half a cup of water into this as well. And um, it made the perfect sauce. The sauce was absolutely awesome for this. This is probably my favorite meal that I've made. I like a little spice, so I added some red pepper flakes in there. This is optional. If you don't like a lot of spice, you don't have to use this. If you like spice, it is so good with the sausage and the spinach and the cream of mushroom. This is so, so good. Go ahead and add your potato gnocchi into this. You're going to go ahead and just mix all of this up. Get this nicely incorporated. By the way, when you are cooking that potato gnocchi, it helps to add some salt to the pan. It helps kind of season up the gnocchi because they are kind of bland if you don't do that. Go ahead and mix this up. You're going to get this nice and stirred and combined. This is is absolutely delicious. This is a hearty meal. This is a comfort meal. You feel really full when you eat it. And the leftovers of this are absolutely incredible. This is probably one of my absolute favorite Dollar Tree meals that I've made so far. This one will be one that I make all the time. Right, if you're not full yet, we've got one more recipe. We're gonna make a really good chili. Now my beans did come from Amazon. However, you can find black beans and kidney beans, pinto beans, all kinds of beans at Dollar Tree. Go ahead and grab some beef broth as well. You're gonna grab a can of Rotel from Dollar Tree. And then also I found these diced potatoes at Dollar Tree. Now the thing that's gonna make this really pop are these spicy beef crumbles that I picked up from Dollar Tree. This is something that's brand new. I've seen this a couple times and I grabbed a couple packages of this every time. It is fantastic for tacos and it's really, really good for this chili because it adds enough spice where you don't need to add any other seasonings. Go ahead, just put your Rotel inside of your pan. You're gonna go ahead and get that heated up. I did drain all of my beans and I'm gonna go ahead and just add those. I also added the potatoes and I drained those as well. You will see why I drained them in just a second here. Go ahead and add those into your pot. I'm gonna go ahead and just stir those up a little bit. You don't technically have to stir it right now because we're gonna be stirring this several times as you will see, but um, what can I say? I stirred mine up. And then you're going to go ahead and add your spicy beef crumbles in here. Now, these are really, really good. I was kind of surprised on how delicious these were. I just went ahead and added them directly into the pan, kind of like you see here. And it's, um, you can see it's kind of chopped up. Just go ahead and kind of chop up the, the chunks, mix it in with your beans and your potatoes, and go ahead and just get that kind of broken up and mixed in there really, really good. Then you're going to take your beef broth. You're going to go ahead and top that off. You can use the entire carton. I think I ended up using about three quarters of the carton. Go ahead and mix this up. And then this is my secret. What I love to do with my chili kind of once it starts to get to this point, I will take two ladles full and I put it in a blender and blend it up and it adds a nice thickness to my chili. Now, don't worry, I did scrape the rest of that blender out into the pot. Go ahead and just stir that all up. And this makes an amazing thickness to your chili. And what's great about it is if you've got a flour allergy, you don't have to do any kind of a flour or any kind of a cornstarch or anything like this. 
you can truly just use the chili and look how delicious this is. You can add cheese to this. You could add the jalapenos to this. You could do all kinds of stuff. Definitely top this with sour cream. This is so good. <music> 